I'm going straight to pen and I'm looking at angles. So I like to hold up my pen here and look at the angle of that balcony. And then I'm gonna take that angle, I'm gonna put it on my paper. So I do this when I'm drawing in real life also. And now I just see this line in my head and that's gonna be the first line that I make. It's a long line and it's gonna go right here. So I'll start at the corner of the balcony and it's gonna go across like this. Okay, so that's the entire balcony. Now it's got some railings that come down like this and then another line that's going to come on a diagonal from there, right underneath. So I'll do that. And it's going to come over. So this is the bottom of the railing. All of the little, um, all of the little, what are the spindles are going to come down from there. So this section is a little bit blockish. It's got a, it's got a long line of, of cubes coming through here. So the challenge with going straight to ink is you don't get to make mistakes you can fix. <laughs> you get to make mistakes, you can't fix them. So I'm gonna put this in, Let's see what I think. And then from there, we've got a little bit of a ledge that comes out and it comes under and down. And then we're gonna come over like so. And it's going to come over this way again. It has a little bit of foreshortening, which means this is gonna get a little wider as it comes closer, like so. All right, railing. And then we've got this little edge and a support right here like this. And then we're gonna come along here and we'll have another support right here. So I like to do some of my longer lines first. That just helps me make sure that things are gonna fit in the picture. And it also gives me something to measure against afterwards. So I've got one, two, I'm gonna have three, four of these little blocks inside this little section. And then it's not gonna be exact replica, obviously, of what I'm seeing, but then I'm gonna add the lines for the spindles. These are just gonna be wiggly lines that are come down. I'm not gonna to be too detailed on all this. That's not the point. So there we go. Now we drew this little angled section. Got that done. So now we're going to look at the next thing, which is going to be the way this comes across from here. And so there's this, it comes further, and then we're going to come down. Now let's see. Let's see how this is as long as this. See, I've got my thumb here. I'm measuring this distance. Now I'm going to measure it on there, on the picture, and I'm going to check. Okay, so this is going to be slightly shorter because it's slightly shorter. So there's the edge of the building, just like that. All right, and then we have like the inside angle of the underneath here and some other things. Okay, so let's just establish this, that this building is here for now. Um, maybe I'll draw the post that's going up as well, just to grab that too. So this was here and that comes in, and it's gonna go up like so, and like so, and there's a thing, nothing important. All right, now let's let's look at the horizon. I'm gonna check my angles here, I'm just holding my pen, to check and it's pretty straight line. So again, I'm just gonna bring this into my picture and see how far up I want it to go. And then I'm gonna draw a line that represents the horizon. It's gonna come right along here. This is where the water meets the sky, like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the car in next. That is the scary part. So I'm going to make the road um, the car is fully in the road in this picture. And I don't think we have any more chat, but that's okay. I can I can do both. If you want to say something, I could probably check in. I see there's seven of you here. That's awesome. All right. So, let's see. I need some more perspective on this. So, from this corner of the building, we've got the road coming in this direction here. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to make this line for the road. It's going to come behind this post, out to here, 
And then there's the shadow of the building. So the road keeps going, but the building has a dark shadow that comes in here like this. And that gives me a place to put the car, which is what I really needed. So let's see. <laughs> We're going to start by deciding something like, where is this going to go? Okay, here we go. Figure it out, figure it out. Let's check. Let's check how long it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the car on the picture. So here I go, measuring the car on the picture. And it is, okay, I got it. So it's as long as this end of my pen cap. Now I'm turn this way and we'll see how long that is compared to. Okay, so half as long as this. So if this is this, the car will be half as long. So we're talking this long. That's how long my car is going to be. So the back of the car is going to be here. And the front of the car is going to be here. Okay. <laughs> this is hilarious. Hope you're having fun. Um, I am. I'm having fun. So that's what matters, right? And then we're going to have the fender. It goes over the tire angles like this. We have a nice straight line. And then we have another little up down for the back tire, which is probably more like here. And then it goes to the back. All right, here we go. Front lights up over the hood. And it's a convertible. So we've got a hood that angles back like this. And there's a person in the car driving. And we can't see them very well. So this picture's really far away. And then we're going to angle this whole thing back to the back end of the car. And we've got a bumper right there. Okay, we're getting there. Now we need wheels on the car. So draw those in. They're not, they're not very low. They, they hide in here. And then we've got lots of darkness across the top. So the great thing about doing uh, pen and ink sketches is that a lot of what happens really pops when you add the color. You can cover up some mistakes that you made uh, with color. So we got this nice line here and then we've got um, the white section here. Da -da. Okay, so that's going to be the basics of our car. The basics. Now we've got some details here and here. All right, so the rest is gonna, the rest of the magic there is gonna happen in um, post-production. So this is the street. I said it was the water, but uh, apparently it's just the street. <laughs> so we're gonna bring in the water. And we're gonna make it a little higher here so that we have something to paint when we get there beautiful thing about this is it doesn't really matter where the water is. All right. I think it's great that we're having a chat. So what kind of, um, I'm, I'm curious, Tammy Sue, what kind of art do you usually do? Because I always do want to know what other people are up to. I'm kind of curious that way. So I'm going to make some more lines up here for my building and then some more lines. These are some windows that are up, up above, up above. So this is a horizontal line in the window, but everything's angled here. So I have to keep that horizontal as well, uh, angled the way the other horizontal lines are going just to keep it in accurate perspective. And then we have little panel sections here. <laughs> little panel sections, probably boarded up windows actually. So let's just add another one here. And then we have just some horizontal lines to fill that in. All right, all right, all right. So now I'm just gonna darken up this line now that I see what I've got going on. Uh, pencil and chalk sketch and handwriting parchments. Ah, I wish I had better handwriting. The wick 
Wixmaker Wicked. Hello. Hello, the Wixmaker Wicked. Um, nice to see you here today. Yeah, my, my, I'd like to be better at uh, lettering, but I guess I could be, right? The, the whole thing I always tell everyone is if you want to be better at something, you have to practice. All right, so we've got this line. And what am I going to do next? Let's let's bring these other lines over. So this is the top corner where the roof meets the building. Then there's a little ledge that's going to come along underneath here. And um, underneath here, like this. So that gives me that whole section that's a little bit darker. And it gives me a better place to figure out where the rest of the things go. So from here, looking closely, there's this archway. Um, and it's going to come down about here. And all I see on this is a curve that goes down. And then here, there's the edge of this pillar. It's going to go in like that. And then we have the arch continuing down. Well, watercolor nerve, I hear you. It's um, it's really, it takes you out of your comfort zone because you can't control it. Watercolor is a really interesting medium where it really is like its own, it's got its own ideas about what your art's gonna end up like. But I love that about it. Like, I think it's great when you can give up a little bit of artistic control and let your medium sort of take over. Um, but I like the idea of doing some ink work first just to give just to give it structure because actually what I kind of like is when the watercolors don't stay in the lines. We'll just talk about this one for a second. But like I didn't color in every detail of this picture and I, I'm okay with that. And same thing with this um, with this uh, lighthouse uh, sketch that I did. The, the lines don't define where the color goes. And that's what makes watercolor so interesting. Same thing here with these grapes. Um, if you look at it closely, you can see that the color of the grapes goes outside the lines. And then sometimes I don't fill it in all the way. Here I left, left the blank to let a little bit of like a highlight happen there. And then the shadows don't have to be the right colors. Like nothing is actually the color that it actually is. So I think that's, that's kind of a neat thing about watercolors is that, you know, you can you can just go with it. Um, so Jacqueline likes watercolor. That's that's good. Um, where are you, Jacqueline? Where are you located? We've been chatting here a little bit about where we are. I don't recall if you said. All right, I'm gonna commit to this box here. See, I'm having a hard time with commitment right now. Um, so this is marking the bottom of this window box, whatever it is. And then we're gonna have it start to angle here. There's a little white, a little white uh, edge to this. So I'm just gonna draw a tiny edge. Now I'm gonna define the box. So just checking, it is foreshortened, so it's going to have a wider top than bottom. That maybe is long enough. I'm gonna wider at the bottom like this, and then. How much further? Let's see. We've got this as reference. This is the corner of the building. It's coming down on them. <clears throat> well, my perspective is a little bit off there. So we're just going to fudge it because you can. In the end, it doesn't matter. Uh, north part of Florida. Oh, yes. Panhandle. I think someone told me that. That was probably you. Jack Keelan. That's an interesting name. I like it. All right, so here I'm going to make this top edge, which is trickier than it should be. <laughs> so grab a drink of water. Drink of water. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain here the last couple of days. And uh, spring, I guess. Rain is a good thing. But means it's hard to get outside to paint or draw. All right, so now we're gonna have this shadow coming down here and this angle coming over here and then we've got it meeting the wall. All right, we're at it, at it. Okay, so we get this archway now to finish which is gonna come down and finish in behind 
this little bit. So down she comes. So I had to draw this. I had to draw the thing. You always have to draw the things in the front first. Go figure. So we're coming down from the arch like this. And then we're going to draw the edge of this block. Like so. Okay. Now we can finish the bottom of this arch opening because we couldn't before. And it's coming down like this. Okay. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of people on YouTube doing um, watercolor lately. It's like my new my new obsession. And uh, they're really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they're really good. It's inspiring me to to try to do more with, with this medium. I've been watching this girl. She's called Following the Follow the White Rabbit, I think. I think I got that right. Following the White Rabbit. She seems to be French. Um, and she's really interesting to watch. Seems like I draw slower when I'm talking. Um, this is not necessarily going to be the most productive um, live stream ever. <laughs> but it's better than being by myself, because that's what I was before. Um, hot pressed. Oh, which paper am I using this time? This time I'm using cold pressed. And, hi Rohan, uh, that's your question. And uh, Tammy Sue's going to watch back later. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Come, come find out how I did. <laughs> it might be horrible. And yeah, Rohan, I'm using the hot pressed paper, uh, cold pressed. I'm using cold pressed watercolor paper. All right. So here we have the bottom of this pillar post and some stairs. Yeah. going past the door. It's always amazing. You, you want to draw what you think you see, but what you have to actually draw is what you really do see, which isn't always what you think, which is hard to get used to after at first. It's like you want it to be exactly what you know it is, but then you, when you see the angles of it, it's not always the same. In fact, it's almost never the same. So here, I'm going to check my angles. So just like I did before, I used my pen. First, I check the angle for the top edge of the um, building. Now I'm going to use my pen to check the bottom edge angle for the building. So um, that's the angle. Now I'm going to bring it in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going OK. So this has to keep on growing closer. So here, um, this door opened. And so this corner here. This corner here has some stairs coming down. Then we're going to bring this a little lower and a little lower. Now we have another door opening. There's a little ledge here and a door. So this line here, this top of this door, continues on so that the top of this door is got a similar angle. So it's growing bigger at the top, but it's also growing bigger at the bottom. And we call that foreshortening. Uh, because we're using perspective. So something has a, a wider angle than the other. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm close the door, come down here. And it seems like there's these little lips, little edges into the side of the building when it meets the door. Um, the three Copic marker challenge. You know what? Actually, I was thinking that maybe what I'll do, there's some, um, I don't know if you've heard of Mark Terrell Holmes. He does a lot of um, plein air drawing and uh, sketching. He has issued a challenge. It's called a 30 by 30 challenge. And he is asking people to do 30 paintings in 30 days in June. So I might do that. That's, um, that's going to take up a lot of my time. So a three marker challenge um, might have to wait till July. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, here's this door. Now, Let's, let's put everything here relative to this door. So we're going to have this edge that's going to come up and over. And now this corner of this door is just about as far as that. This is going to come down like this. And then we're going to come up. And I'm talking to myself while I draw, which is not unusual. Um, and then going to this back 
meets. Okay. Like this. So you'll notice that what I've just drawn here is not exactly what I've seen because I started with this thing and it was not placed properly. But that's okay. I don't care. I really don't. <laughs> All right. Now we've got this corner. That's going to bring some darkness back here, some shadow. It's going to come down again, in again. And then it's going to come down here and meet up with this other end. So are you doing the three copper marker challenge, Rohan? And where are you located? I'm curious. I had some Americans here. Are you, I'm in Canada. And maybe you are in another country. Or maybe you're in one of those two that I just named. Curious. Um, all right, so here's that open door. Now we're gonna continue the line of the wall here. And we're going to build in, um, I drew that. So this comes down. We have one block width and then we're gonna do that. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm whispering to myself while I draw. <laughs> I do that. All right, so we're getting somewhere. It's not fast, but I'm learning. I'm not in a hurry. And if it's horrible, that's okay. Do you know what? Let's talk about that for a minute. Sometimes people get frustrated when their art doesn't turn out good or when they perceive that it didn't turn out as well as they hoped. But the fact is, um, hey, Susanna Orozco, nice to see you. I'm glad you dropped in. Um, yeah, when you don't like your art, it's okay. The, everything you do doesn't have to be wonderful. Everything I do isn't wonderful. In fact, a lot of things I do aren't wonderful. But it's okay because we're learning. And we learn best when we make mistakes. That's a fact. So this meets here, and now that's going to come out on this angle. And then come along here to make the stair. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky. Stairs. Stairs are tricky on this angle. It's okay. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. No one's going to trip on that stair. It doesn't matter if it's a little crooked. It's just a drawing. All right. So then there's a wheelbarrow on the side of the road. So I'm going to draw that next. It's in front of this archway. So see the opening of the archway. I don't know. Can you see this um, little wheelbarrow I'm drawing? It's very probably very tiny on your screen, but um, it's in front of this door. So I'm going to do it. It takes up pretty much the whole width of the door. And first we're going to draw the little like hexagon, no, pentagon that is from here. And then we're going to draw that angle here and under here. It's a cart. I don't know if it's a wheelbarrow. It's some sort of cart. It's got a wheel on it. I don't see a handle though. I see a little stand. Okay, now we're ready to finish this curb. So bring it along and it comes behind the wheelbarrow and it's going to angle wider as we get to this edge here. So I'm just going to make that mark to aim for. And again, gets wider as it comes this way. All right, now everything else that's here is the shadows from the paint. Um, so let's go ahead and put the sign in. So the sign is coming up like this and it's circular with a triangle in the middle. So let's do the triangle and then put the circle around it like so. And I don't know what that says. It must be a yield sign. Can't read it from here. And there's a little boy right here in the foreground and I'm going to put him in too. So uh, first I'm going to think about the angle of his head. He's really close in the foreground. So he's angled down like this. That's his chin. And then we can see his arm. He's coming. I'm just going to scroll so I can actually see the rest of him. Um, we've got back of his shirt and his arm coming down. There's his sleeve here. And he's reaching to the ground with his arm, his hand. Maybe, I'm going to put a little car here. I'm going to pretend he's playing with a car. I can't really tell what he is doing. But that's what I'm going to pretend what he's doing. And then over here we see his other leg. It's coming down. And then his foot. Um, okay, bye-bye, Susanna. Father, dad, illustration. Oh, for Father's Day. Yeah, that's 
That's a good idea. Nice. Is that what you're going to do for your three Copic marker challenge? Now, let's see here. That was his arm. So his shoulders here. And he's going to come down. Back of his shirt. Curves in. This. Curves up. And then he's sitting like this. And we have his knee here. And then he's sitting on the curb. And the curb is coming out like this towards us. It's going out like this away from us and towards here. Okay, now this might be everything that I'm going to add before painting. Painting! My favorite part. So this is where it gets really fun because anything could happen. <laughs> anything could happen. Um, I could add a couple more details here. There's this one thing that comes down from the roof, meets in the corner here, and it touches this part of the structure. And then we've got a couple of lines that come in from up uh, here. So let's see. see. This, this corner, corner is, is a... Okay, so now I'm going to take some of the color off my brush, which is going to jump out of my hand. Take some of the color off my brush and just work with water while I bring this color down into the car. That will give it some, like, a shiny appearance. And I'm going to just grab a different brush. I'm grabbing a dry brush so I can actually suck up some of the water that's on here because it was getting to be too much. All right. So by sucking up the water, I'm able to control how much paint is on there. Wow, this is this brush. The water brush it's, sometimes has more water coming out of it than you hope, because it's all coming down into the tip of the brush. So when you're doing really fine work like this, you might end up with more water than you really wanted. Because so I'm getting used to these. This is not a kind of a style of brush that I would have used before. All right, so we've got this done. We're going to come into here in a minute. Uh, maybe I'll throw this shadow in with a really nice dark color. So I see blue in that shadow, and um, I'm going to go with maybe this um, uh, Prussian blue, I think. Prussian blue. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on pretty thick. So it comes all the way to the edge of the car like this. So that's the edge of my shadow. And then it comes along the building, bumps up, bumps up, bumps up. I'm going to pretend that the boy is in the shadow, but he's not. I mean that the shadow comes to there. In the actual picture, you'll see that the shadow is slightly less protrudent on the street scene, but that's just the way I ended up drawing it. All right, so here we have this dark, shadowy street. Keep filling it in. Now, as it gets closer, it looks more gray. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Payne's gray and mix that in with my blue. Bring it all the way to the front here. And make sure that doesn't dry. That was too much. So the paint, the paper that I'm using is really not the best quality of paper. I could use some, I could use to spend some money on paper, but I'm new at this, so I'm I'm still working it out. Um, and I wasn't really sure when I got started if I was going to even like it. So I don't want to spend a fortune on paper and stuff. So I just got started with this. Now, this sidewalk is also in shadow, but it has a much more muted gray color. So I'm just going to get some of um, some really watered down gray. I'm going to fill it in through here, like so. So this is the sidewalk in shadow. Just a tiny bit more color. And I'm going to avoid the stairs for now. And I'm really going to avoid the wheelbarrow, which is tricky. It is tricky, it's tricky, it's tricky. And this shadow goes right into the door. So I'm going to take the shadow with me 
into the door way. And like so. All right. Bring some of the color with me. I successfully avoided the wheelbarrow. And I think I need some sky in that little section. So I'm super cleaning off my brush, making sure I don't have any right here. I need a little bit of sky. It has to be super pale. So I'm just going to touch a little bit of blue in there. Like so. I have to be careful to let that dry before I come back to it. Otherwise, I'll be disappointed. But I think I am ready now to put in some color for the water. So I'm going to switch over to my ultramarine deep. I'm going to put that in here. So first, I'm just going to wet it down a little bit, avoiding the street sign. I'm going to bring in this ultramarine deep and put this in for the water. I know we always think of the water in Cuba as being turquoise, but you know, on some angles, it's not so much. This is one of those angles. All right, a little more. Okay. Father, son, illustrations. Nice. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> Is that crazy? It's a good thing I don't do this all day, or I would like suffocate. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so we've got the ocean and the sky. We've got a little bit of ocean back here. We've got the sky. Now we're going to have the road and this little section, but I'm going to try and let this dry before I get in on this part. So I think I'm ready to kind of do these little shadowy parts of the, of the building. And I'm going to use uh, burnt umber for that and maybe a little bit of gray, but this is the darkest part of the actual painting. So I'm going to just bring in some dark, actually burnt umber, yes, a little bit more burnt than that umber. And I'm going to leave this out for a second because that's the lighter part when my brush gets a little bit less intensely covered in paint, that would be a good time to go over that maybe even on a second coat. So there's something here going on that's like grills maybe. And they come down like this. And over here, we've got this darkness. And over here, that's pretty good. I can always darken it up. If you can always add more paint, it's hard to take away paint. So for now, I'm just gonna leave that. And then I'm going to come over here and do the shadow on the edge of this rock, which is more of a gray than a brown. So let's see here. Come along the edge like this and like this. I have to keep my eye on the tie at the side of appointment, but it's not for another 45 minutes or so. So I'm not late yet. And then these stairs. This is Payne's gray. And then that top step is more of a stone color. So I'm going to go true to life there and leave it un un grayed. And then what else? Um, there's some like splotchy gray stuff up here. I might add that later. And there's a bit of gray here where these railings are. So let's, let's put that in, but let's make it watery. So let's see what we got going on here. like that is yes that's perfect so gray in between the bricks so I'm trying to work this so that I have a time lapse as well um, so I'm filming it two ways 
through my webcam and also through my regular camera phone. Oh, I'm having a hard time with my phone though. Gosh, I have to tell you, it's not making me very happy. I'm trying my best not to um, cause a stink on on uh, social media, but wow, company I'm dealing with is not making it easy for me. People, you guys want to hear a phone rant? I've got a phone rant. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the story. I won't tell you who what the company is just yet. But basically, what happened was my this, the part where you listen when you're having a phone conversation stopped working on my phone. So I um, I brought the phone in to have it repaired. It's only about ten months old. It's got a really good camera. It was and it made it hard for me to do any videos while it was gone because I had this stupid loaner phone that didn't have a really good camera. So I was stuck with doing whatever I could um, with that other phone. And so when I got the phone back, they called me from the, the cell phone provider where I had brought it to have it sent in for repairs. Uh, they called me and said, my phone was ready. I should come pick it up. So I went to go pick up my phone. When I got there, I discovered that the screen was smashed. Yeah. While they had my phone, they smashed my screen. So I was unhappy about that. Um, when I sent the phone off, the screen was not smashed. When I got the phone back, the screen was smashed. So I figured that wasn't my fault that the screen was smashed since I sent a phone in without a smashed screen. But then they proceeded to tell me that I was not covered under the warranty for the phone because I had voided the warranty by repairing the screen one month after I got it, which is true. I, I repaired the screen one month after I got the phone because the screen was smashed. I dropped it. <laughs> Not far. Tiny little drop. Great big smash. That happens, right? That's okay. I was fine with that. I paid for the repair. But uh, apparently that voids your warranty. And I guess I didn't know that. Nobody really asked me about it when I brought the phone in, so I didn't even think to tell them. Oh, okay. When you get paint on your hand, <laughs> you can't put it back on the painting until the paint is dry. Okay. Better. Uh, yeah, so it's still time on the phone story. Um, water color brush tips for beginners. Okay, I will tell you that when I'm finished with the story of my stupid phone. Um, yeah, so in, in fact, not only was the screen smashed, but the problem that the phone was having when I brought it in in the first place was not repaired because it was not under warranty any longer. They said that I refused, that I didn't reply to their quote that they sent me and like they didn't send me a quote, which is why I didn't reply. I wanted the phone fixed. Of course I would have said yes, that sounds exorbitant, but please fix my phone. But I did not receive any kind of quote, so I could not respond to the quote. Therefore, I got back a phone that went away with no smash and came back with giant smash and, um, also not fixed. And then they're telling me that they are not going to replace my phone. Um, I could send it back for repairs, but like, I'm sort of skeptical. I sent it for repairs once already and it came back broken, more broken. So uh, if I'm going to get it fixed, I'm not going to send it to them for fixing. Does that sound pretty reasonable? I think it does. I don't think I'm being unreasonable by saying that I don't want those people to fix my phone. I don't want them to touch my phone ever again. So that's my very sad phone story. Um, all that just to say, I use my phone <laughs> for filming overhead views. Okay, uh, water brush tips for beginners. One, don't squeeze this unless you're trying to wet your paints. If you're trying to add water to your paints, go right ahead, squeeze it. But if you are trying to paint um, an area that isn't going to be really faint. You want to not have a whole lot of water coming out of your brush. So you need to be careful to not squeeze it. That is the first tip. The second tip is expect your paint to be um, a little later than, than um, if you just use it straight off the pan. And let's see another tip. Um, well, I when I'm doing brush work, I'm only I only ever have just the one brush, so you have to kind of get used to what kind of tips you can get. And when you're doing little detail work, you might want to have a second brush with you, just to make that go easier. Okay, so I'm not going to do this little skinny part because that seems like it's going to be tricky. But I do want to do the sandy colors 
for the road here and the sidewalk. So that's a little tricky too. I'm gonna to use um, I'm gonna use the yellow okra and I'm going to make it really watery. So over here I am squeezing a little water onto my palette um, just to give this color. So I'll just move this over a little bit so you can see. Um, just to give this color some uh, dilution. So if I dilute it, then it won't be quite as shocking when I put it out. All right, so now I'm going to go along the edge of the water, which is dry, and I'll start back here and fill this in. Now it always does dry lighter than you see it. So the other day I painted a sky, which I expected to have more color than it ended up with. But that's because when it was wet, it looked blue. When it dried, it looked kind of white. All right. So I'm also dragging a little bit of this color along. And the great thing about water brushes is you always have water right there. You don't have to go dipping for it um, every time you want to add more to clean your, like you're always, if you're using a traditional brush, you have to frequently um, clean your brush in order to keep um, the colors pure. But when you're using a water brush, it is a little bit self-cleaning because the water is always pushing out of the brush. So you always have, um, you always have water right there at your disposal. So I'll grab a little more color and where will I put it? It's a question. <laughs> Manor Mysteries. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Where are you from? That's the question of the day. Where are you from? I don't think Rohan told me where he was from. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Oh, so as bad as I am with names, I'm worse with places. Sorry about that. I think he did tell me. I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> All right. So here we have the sidewalk. Now, I think there's some darkness. I'm just looking at the actual picture right now, and I see a little bit of darkness in here along sort of this edge of the road. I'm just going to put that in with a little extra yellow ochre, which is not the color that I see in the picture, but it's the most reasonable picture color to put without giving this um, without giving this picture unnecessary amounts of shadows, because that's can be distracting. Okay, now I'm going to do the boy's skin. So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use this light red, which is kind of like a burnt sienna, um, with burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow, maybe yellow ochre. That looks I like it. Okay, so there's not much flesh here, but I'm going to try and keep my brush just on here. So leg and arm and other leg. And face. Now I'm also going to take some of this away because it's dark. So I'm going to take my dry brush and I'm just going to pull. So I really just want a faint layer. When you're painting skin, you don't want it to be like opaque color. So you want the water to help you with that. And pull this off. And I might even water it down a little bit as well. So what I will do here is clean my brush off and then go back with my tip. So when I touch this pen, this water brush, I'm going to call it a pen because it feels like I'm using a pen, it's wet all the time. So right now I'm just scrubbing a little bit to pull off the too much paint that I added. Well, it's still wet. You can do that. All right. Getting there. Yes, we are. Okay, now he is wearing some dark shorts, so a nice uh, Prussian blue here for the shorts, and I'm going on with full color here because these are dark, except my paint is not very wet. India, and it's midnight, okay. <laughs> well, you should go to bed, Rohan. You can watch this later. No, you can stay and watch it. I'm not, uh, not going to tell you what to do. Really, I'm not. And then there's some shadows under here. So it's going to give this a little shadow. And I have the shoes sticking out over here. Uh huh, that's true. Now we get a little shadow here also from his head. And what else do I need? 
shadow behind him, but I need maybe a gray for that. So I'll pick up a gray, and I don't want to do it because I'm worried about running it into pants, but I'll do it anyway. Taking chances. So that's another tip for watercolors is, you know, you can't, if you don't want your colors to like blend into each other, you have to not touch wet things until they're dry. And then they're all wet, right? All right, so then we have this dark wheel on the wheelbarrow. So let's clean the brush off, get all of the paint off of it, and just grab some really straight up Payne's Gray. And just pop that into this wheel. You can always go over this after with, uh, with a pen when it's done. Okay, so what else? What else? What else? We need to do the building. Now I see if I look at the if I look at the Instagram, there's a little bit of like um, reddish color coming in through here and here, and then also down the side of uh, of this shadow. So I'm going to take advantage of that, and I'm going to use this. Um, it's called light red, but again, to me, it's more like a burnt sienna. And I'm going to mix that with my raw umber just a little bit. No, with my uh, with my, I'll get the name for it, yellow ochre, yeah. Does anyone else have a hard time talking while I do things like this? Man, it's like I don't have a brain. Concentrating so hard. And then there's red up here too, a little bit of red in this section. I don't know why it's red up there. It's rust maybe or some kind of, some kind of situation. There's a bit of red in here. It comes right up. At this point. All right, so that's the extent of the serious red. I have set this hint of it along this line here too. So let's put that in first. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost done. Almost done. Um, we need the light wash for the entire thing. Now there's a little bit of gray over here. Let's just pull some gray down this edge, up under here. This has a gray look about it. Gray-ish, more gray than everything else. And where did I find that? So I've been mixing on my tray here and I'm trying to keep my colors reasonably organized, but I think I forgot where I just picked that up. In fact, I know I forgot. Um, all right, looking. What am I going to do next here? Got some dark in there. I made a little more gray. That's where I got it, right there. A little more gray. So as this archway, there's some dirt down here. Some dirt down here. Okay, I need more of that gray. That's a good gray. This is good for, like, texture. So I'm just dabbing here. I'm not, not really being particular. I just want it to have um, a roughness about it that gives it the feeling that it's a little bit in need of some TLC. TLC. Oh, there's a dark part there. Bring that in. Daca. Quick question. What's good? Kneaded or plastic eraser? Okay, good question. Um, a plastic eraser has a tendency to um, rub off the tooth of your paper. So if your paper is really sturdy and you really need to get a line off, then plastic eraser should be your friend, should be no problem. However, um, the nature of uh, the plastic eraser is that it can destroy your paper. So Sometimes better to opt for a kneaded and then just roll it on your paper to pick up your lines. It won't be quite as um, efficient necessarily at pulling off what you don't want, um, which is actually why I'm trying to do this work here without any, like I didn't use pencil when I started this picture. I went straight into um, using this pen Oh, speaking of pens, I didn't put the cover on. It's been sitting there for half an hour with the cover off. Um, yeah, I try. I'm trying to um, work. Looking at the picture, I'm trying to. I'm gonna add a little yellow there. You see that? There's some yellow right up here in this little window. This little cast of. I don't know why. But it's yellowy up here. 
Um, I'm going to roll my screen down again so I can see that stuff at the top. Let's see here. Okay. We're going. I think we're almost to the part where we're just going to need this wash of um, a wash of really faint, really, really faint. Uh, oh, no, no, that's not what I wanted. So I didn't want any lines to show. That's better, but not what I wanted. It's okay. No mistakes, just happy accidents. You know who said that? You guys, Bob Ross fans. So the kneaded eraser will do less damage on your um, on your art, on your paper, as you're working with that. But uh, but it won't necessarily be as, as good at pulling. So that's that's the, sort of the why of each. Um, yeah. Since I've drawn Kim Possible, would I draw Shago too? Hmm, that's a possibility. And I'm saying hello to Om Tiwari. Om Tiwari. That's a very cool username. All right, so I think I'm ready. I've got my watered down yellow ochre, and I'm going to start painting all of the rest of this. I'm just going to wash the whole thing out here. The whole thing, I hope I don't run out. I'm going to make some more so I don't run out. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just making a little puddle of watered down color. Because even though my water brush continues to add color, I really, really want this to be just a wash. I don't want it to be full on. This is, this is color is a little bit opaque in the first place, so that means it does um, it does cover up like pen or whatever's underneath it. So I'm going to pick up some of that and put it on here and through here. And through here. And I'm washing it right over all of these grays that I did. And when I do watercolor, I really I don't want to stay in the lines. It's not my goal is not to paint within the lines. I think watercolor looks really good when it's a little bit haphazard. Uh, and I ran out. Can you believe it? As much as I did not want to run out, I still did. Um, yeah, I think watercolor looks best when it's doing its own thing when you don't try to control it too much. So that's what I do. Oh, except I'm smudging there. Okay, now I see some areas that need more depth of shadow. So that's what I'm gonna do next. But I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. Maybe I'll go and take care of this post. And something's, something needs to happen over here on the car as well. So what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of uh, light light gray and I'm just going to add some light light gray on the car here so it doesn't look quite so um, unfinished that will give it a look of somebody painted that and same thing with the boy's shirt he's got a little bit of shadow down here and then I'm going to fix his hair with my pen because there's no way I'm doing that with watercolor uh, let's see questions Manchester I think my comment kept disappearing because I put a flag. Oh, if you put a flag, yeah, it means like you you flagged your comment because it meant that like, that's a bad comment. No one should read that. So don't flag yourself. Um, so you're from near Manchester. That's cool. So um, I'm actually going to be visiting England this summer. I'm looking forward to it. I have never been. So that should be fun for me. If you have any tips on things to do and see, be mostly in the London area, but uh, I wouldn't want to miss anything important. I want to see the Greenwich Meridian. I want to see Stonehenge and then all the London things, you know, Harry Potter tour, Eye of London. I don't know, I might go see where the where the royals live. I'm not that into royal things, but you know, can't hurt if you're there. You might as well check it out. All right, so here I go, adding some more shadows. This needs to really deepen under here. It's like totally in shadow. So going straight up to Payne's gray there. I usually try to avoid gray in paintings. Like my shadows here are not gray. They're blue because more the sky is causing them. But this building is um, made of stone. So I feel like gray is a good choice. 
as much as I would maybe add other colors some of the time. I put a little bit of blue up here because I see it in the picture. Um, I'm almost done. Yeah, almost. Sometimes when it's dry, I see more things I want to do, and then I add them later. And then I add them later. Okay, let's see. I added this bit of shadow, and there's a little bit of detail up there. Oh, look, I missed all this. This is really, should be quite dark along the edge here. And this one too. Okay. Okay, okay. All right, so what does it need? Anybody got any ideas what this needs? Maybe a little bit more something up there. Maybe a little more texture through here. Yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna pull some other texture into this front. Stipple it a little bit. Pop it up. I just didn't want to do that at first because you can always add color, but you cannot take it away. That's the tricky thing. So I'm just going to thank you guys for joining me. I'm almost done here. I'm going to be signing out soon. That's kind of fun. It's way better than sitting here by myself painting. Well, I, I am sitting here by myself. It's way better than having no one to chat with while I paint it. Better say that. So maybe I'll do this again. Maybe. Now that I figured out how, that was the challenge, right? In software, I had to like set up a camera and set up a camera and set up a screen share and then figure out the streaming settings because that's never, never seems as easy as it should be somehow. I'm not technically ignorant, but sometimes I feel that way. I always blame the people who set it up as not really looking at the right way for users to understand it, but it's probably me. It's probably me. I'm, I'm really likely the cause of the problem. Um, <laughs> okay, so are paper stumps good or best? Um, paper stumps are good if you need to blend. Yeah, if you've got some pencil work and you want to blend. Um, pencil stumps are better than your finger because you don't put oil on your paper. But in a pinch, I will use a finger. Um, okay. Now, to finish this painting, I feel like I need to splatter some color on here. And this kind of turquoise blue of the sky is like the awesomest color in the whole picture. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to possibly destroy this picture <laughs> by getting a whole bunch of it on this brush. And then I'm going to hit the brush and cause the color to go on the picture. Are you ready for it? <laughs> Could be big blobs. Hope not. Hope not. Maybe no blobs. Come on. Yeah, no blobs. Let's try more, a little more water. Here we go. A little more color. A little more color, a little more water. Try again. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So, you know, it's such a casual picture. It should have, like, splatters. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with my ochre. What do you think of that? What do you think of splatters on the picture? Is that good or bad? I mean, to me, like, it just feel like it hides a whole bunch of mistakes. Um, so, Man of Mysteries, I'm really glad you tried the Compossible. And um, I used to be really bad at drawing, too. Uh, there was a day when I was not good at drawing. But I did a lot of drawing. And got better at it. <laughs> I just hit myself in the nose <laughs> with watercolors. Okay, that's probably enough splatters. Otherwise, it's going to get, like, monopolizing the painting. Okay, it's done.